This community yoga practice is going to be about uh, 40 minutes long, and we're going to get deep into working the core. And then we're going to use that strength to do some one-legged balances. So as usual, you want to have a couple of yoga blocks or a block. You could take a stack of hardback books and duct tape them together. Um, maybe a blanket if it's, you like to sit on a blanket or pad your knees. And maybe a chair or the wall that you can use to help you balance. So as we always do, we will start first paying attention to the breath. So you could start laying on your back if you like or stay sitting. I invite you to close your eyes. Level off your chin. And then simply follow your inhale and your exhale. Maybe adding that ocean sound or ujjayi breathing. Then we'll do one simple uh, controlled breath exercise. So there shouldn't be any anxiety about this or dizziness. If you have any of that, just let it go and breathe normally. All we're going to do is inhale for like four or five counts and then exhale the same and then suspend the breath at the bottom of the exhale. So exhale everything out. And then let's try five. Inhaling. And exhaling and hold and inhaling and exhaling let's try holding for all five hold and inhaling and exhaling and hold and inhale and exhale and hold and inhale and exhale and hold one more and inhale and exhale and hold and release the breath just come back to normal breathing feeling the mind settled and so as we challenge our core that which sustains us keeps us safe if there's an intention that like you'd like to set Maybe it's strength, maybe it's patience, maybe it's compassion. Set that now and then just let it go, knowing that if you get distracted or you lose track of your breath, that word, that prompt will bring you back. So we're gonna move our spine in all six directions just easily and lightly. On an inhale, tilt your pelvis forward, lift your chest, maybe gaze up. Exhale, hollow out, pull your mid back toward the back. Let your head gently drop if you can. So remember, you're your own best teacher. Inhaling, gently arch. And exhaling, hollow out. So much of this core work is to protect our low back, our lumbar spine. Just keep moving with the breath, hollowing out on the exhales and arching on the inhales. So just be careful with your low back as we practice. And if there's any pain, don't do it. Or find a way to modify. Sometimes that's bending your knees a little bit. Sometimes it's not going so deep. So one more cat cow, inhaling and exhaling. 
and then come on back to neutral. And we're simply going to go from side to side, twisting with the breath. So on your inhale, twist one direction, drop your tailbone, and exhale through center. Inhale, get tall, twist the other direction, and exhale through center. Again, inhaling, and exhaling. Just twisting around your waist, inhaling. So the low body stays stable. And one more time. Good. And then rest one hand on the mat. Take the other arm way up and exhale straight over to the side. And just do little gentle folding motions. Maybe going a little deeper each time. And then come on back up. And right away, we'll inhale and go to the other side. Just little gentle pulses. And inhale, come on back up. And exhale, pause. So then we're going to come on to our backs. You're going to want to have a block or a pillow handy. We're going to roll onto our back. So this motion you won't probably won't be able to see. It's super subtle. My feet are bent in line with my hips. Maybe I can touch my heels. It's just a little tiny pelvic tuck. So you're trying to get rid of that curve in the lumbar spine. Like you might be able to push a little matchbox car under there. Now you want to get rid of that, flatten it out. So on the exhale, tilt your pelvis, flatten your back. Keep the chin level, spine long, inhaling, release. And exhaling, flatten. And inhaling, release. One more time, exhaling, flatten. And inhaling, release. And go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. And give yourself a little hug. Maybe rock from side to side. Good, and then grabbing hold of a block or a pillow. We're going to squeeze the block. So our inner thighs are an important part of our core strength. All right? They help keep our uh, legs in line, and our strong inner thighs will keep the sacrum wide. Right, So you're lengthening that three-boned joint, the pelvis, and the, sacro, the sacroiliac joint. So you're going to point your toes like a ballerina, and on an inhale, take them down toward the mat. And maybe you can go all the way, just being mindful of your own spine. right? Tapping slowly and gently, and exhaling, pull back in. Keep squeezing the block with the inner thighs. Inhaling, lengthen, and exhaling, pulling in. One more time. Inhaling, lengthen, and exhaling, pulling in. Okay, so then we're going to take the legs, knees right over the hips, and the shins parallel to the ground, so you look like a chair on its back. And we're just going to gently exhale the knees over to one side about halfway. And then come back through center and go the other way. So starting to warm the obliques. We're going to do that three times each side. Just move with the breath. Squeeze the block. And one more time each side. You don't have a block. You could just squeeze your knees together, right? Good. And gently release. Let go of the block and take your heels to the ceiling. So we're going to lower one leg at a time. Ideally, you just hover it right over the mat and you keep the legs straight, the toes drawn back towards the knees. If you need to modify, don't go as low and mend your knees a little bit. And try and challenge yourself. Exhaling one leg down and inhaling back up. Just notice the breath. Now let's switch that. So on your inhale, you're going to lower down. And on your exhale, feel the low belly pulling in. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, pull it in. One more time. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, pull it in. Inhaling, lower down. Exhale, pull it in. Go ahead and bend your knees. And give yourself a little hug again. Rock from side to side. 
Good. Then we're going to take our heels up and our arms up and pretend like you're holding a cardboard box. So again, the modifications would be to bend the legs slightly. You're going to do opposite arm and leg. So one leg and arm go down. Exhale, pull it back in. Other arm and leg go down. Exhale, pull it back in. One more time each side. And pull it back in. And down. And pull it back in. And once again, draw the knees into the chest. Take your feet as wide as the edges of the mat. And just windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Just gently releasing those muscles around the spine. Good. Then we're going to bend our knees again, plant your heels, and do a couple of bridge poses. So you could always challenge yourself by holding the block again and see what that feels like. The goal here is to push your shoulders and all of your foot, especially the big toe mound, into the mat. And on an inhale, you're going to lift your hips up and exhale down. We're going to do that two more times, inhaling hips up and exhaling down. And again, inhaling hips up. And exhaling down. This one we're going to hold, inhaling hips up. So you might stay here, or you might tuck your shoulder blades together and get your hands together underneath you. Lifting the chest, relaxing the neck. Just feeling those feet rooted. And exhaling, gently release. And once again, release the block. And take a breath. And then roll to one side. And come on back up. We're going to come to all fours. So fingers spread wide to protect the wrists. Knees right over the hips. Shoulders right over the wrists. And inhale, take one heel out. Maybe do a little arch and exhaling knee to nose. Inhaling out and arch. And exhaling knee to nose. Inhaling out. And exhaling knee to nose. Hold here for a breath. And release. And then do the other leg. Inhaling out. Exhaling knee to nose. Inhaling out, exhaling knee to nose. Last one. Knee to the nose, hold for a breath. And exhaling, gently release. Take your knees wider than hip width apart, put your big toes together. And rock your hips back towards your heels for child's pose. So just checking in with your knees. So if this bothers your knees, you could always put a block or a pillow between your hips and your heels. But if not, try and really get your hips down. And maybe your forehead rests on the mat. One breath here. Good. Then on an inhale, come on back up. We're going to make that a little more challenging. We're going to use both an arm and a leg opposite, just like we did when we were laying on our backs. So inhale, arm and leg out, and then exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, arm and leg out, exhale, knee to elbow. Keep the fingers spread wide, pushing in with the finger pads to protect your wrist. Hold here for a breath, and gently release. And we'll go to the other side. Opposite arm and leg out. Exhale in. Just notice one side to the other. And exhale in. One more time. Stretch yourself out long. Exhaling in. Feeling the heat build in the belly. Hold here for a breath. And release. And curl your toes under. We're going to come to our first down dog. All right, so lift your hips up and back. So even here, think about the core. So trying not to uh, let the pelvis relax and tilt forward without support. Think about puffing your chest out, but tucking your tailbone toward your heels. And you can always keep your knees a little bent. That's helpful. 
Squeeze the upper arms toward the ears. One more deep breath here. And then exhaling, bend your knees and walk your feet in to meet your hands. Keep the knees soft. So this would be our forward fold if you're able, right? The knees can stay bent. That's going to help your low back. Then if you want to extend, right, we're going to extend the spine out long, lifting the hips, lengthening the knees, come to half forward fold. Soften the knees again. See if you can bring your ribs toward your thighs slowly and gently. And then if it's okay with your spine, roll up one vertebra at a time. If it's not, come up with a flat back. Just pay attention. Inhaling, take your arms to the sky. And exhale your hands to your heart. Good. So already you kind of feel that core stabilizing you. We're going to come to Tadasana and do a tree pose. So you're going to shift your weight into your right leg. You could do kickstand or you could go to the wall. Better to go to the wall and get on one leg. You could put your foot in the calf or maybe you bring the heel up to the inner thigh. So find something that's not moving to focus on. So not me. Bring your hands back to your heart. Take your arms out to the side. Just make more space. And then exhaling, gently release. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's shift your weight into the other leg. Try and put your foot in the same place on this side. And then take your arms out. Open up. Feel like somebody's pulling on your wrists. And exhaling, gently release. Nice. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of sun salutations. So come back to the front of your mat. So we're going to start in a chair pose. So on an exhale, sweep your fingertips down, sit into your heels. And then on your inhale, lift your chest, take your fingertips forward. And then exhaling, fold. So your version of a forward fold, even if that's just half forward fold, or you could go all the way down. And then exhaling, take the left leg back in high lunge. And then take the right leg back to meet it. So you can stay here on the top of a push-up plank, or you could float your knees down. We're coming down to the mat, so squeeze those elbows in, chaturanga. Then push the tops of the feet into the mat, gently inhaling cobra. Little back bend, use those legs. Maybe even think about rotating the thigh bones inward, that'll keep the sacrum wide. Inhaling cobra. And exhaling, mostly using your back muscles. Inhaling, cobra. And exhaling. And then we're going to come to sphinx pose. So elbows right under the shoulders. Keep feeling like your pelvis is tucking under, taking your tailbone toward your heels. And then see if you can make the space between your shoulders and your ears longer. One more breath. So from here, you're going to push into your elbows and lift your hips up and back. Right? Curl your toes under. We come to dolphin, so walk your feet in a little bit. It's like down dog, but you're on your elbows. Really pushing into the mat. One more breath. Knees can stay a little bit bent. And then exhaling, float your knees down. Come back onto your hands and curl your toes, lifting up and back for down dog. And take a breath. Exhaling, bend the knees again. Walk the feet in to meet the hands. So coming to your version of a forward fold, maybe that's totally like a rag doll. Then we're gonna inhale halfway up. Exhaling, soften. Inhale, arms to the sky. And exhaling your hands to your heart. We'll do that one more time. So inhaling, arms up. Exhaling, soften and fold wherever you can go. Inhale, halfway up. 
tuck that tailbone toward the heels, even here, so you get a really nice, stable lumbar spine. And then exhale, float the knees down. Take the right leg back and high lunge this time. And then the left one back to meet it. Either on your knees or your toes, exhaling, chaturanga. Then float those hips down. We're going to do a locust pose this time. So you're going to squeeze your inner thighs together like you're still holding the block. And inhale, lift your heels. So this time you're going to bring your uh, fingertips to the base of your skull. You just draw your elbows up, just for a breath. And exhaling, gently release. Put your head in your hands, bend your knees, and windshield wiper your feet from side to side. And then gently release the legs back down. So tuck the tailbone and come back onto your elbows in that sphinx pose. Just making a, I feel like your whole uh, upper spine is pulling out away from your waist. One more deep inhale, get longer. And then exhaling, pull your low belly in and come onto your knees. Walk your knees in so that you can come to that dolphin pose again. Soften your knees if you need. Just pushing into your elbows. Pull the low belly and float the knees down. Plant your hands and come right back to downward facing dog. So if you take a plank pose, your hands and your feet should be in the same place, right? Up and back again, the knees can be soft. Again, feeling that tailbone tuck just like in that forward fold, a really stable low back. And then inhaling, look at your thumbs, bend your knees, and walk your feet in to meet your hands. Inhaling halfway up. Exhaling, softening where you can. And then reversing your dive, arms to the sky. And exhaling your hands to your heart. We're going to take another chair pose. So you can work with your feet about two fist widths apart, knees right over the middle of the feet, or you could bring your big toes together and have your heels about an inch apart. I'm going to go with uh, about two fist widths apart. So soften the knees and sit down into your heels. And then shift your weight into your right leg. Find a focal point, something that's not moving. Pull your low belly in, drop your tailbone, and lift the other knee and then slowly and gently take it back to a high lunge. And then take your arms to the sky. And then we're just going to reverse. So hands back to your heart. On an exhale, pull your knee in toward your belly and gently release. So again, you can always do this holding the wall. Just keep your tailbone dropping down. Shift your weight into the other leg. Lift the knee, and then see if you can exhale right back to high lunge, and then take your arms up, and we'll reverse. Hands to the heart, pull your low belly in, tuck the tailbone, and exhaling back into chair pose, inhaling arms to the sky and exhaling your hands to your heart and take a breath here maybe even close your eyes notice how your body feels okay so this is where you might want to have a block or two we're going to do uh, warrior three we're going to step into it so you want your body to be like a seesaw no rounding and folding one long line from the standing leg out through the fingertips so to inhale, take your arms to the sky. You're at the back of your mat. You can interlace your fingers, fingertips pointing toward the sky. And then with your right foot, step forward, point your back toe, and you're going to hinge. So your body only goes down as far as your leg can go up. So pull that low belly in. You can do this holding onto the wall. Try and keep your hips level. 
and get your leg and your chest parallel to the ground. Now you could use your blocks to help you balance. You might need to soften your knee if you're going to get your arms back in the air. And then see if you can lengthen. And come on back. And exhale, hands to the heart. Super challenging on the core. Remember, it's a practice. Use the wall. Don't go as far. You're getting all the benefits. Mind, body, core. Just going where you're able. So again, taking the arms up. Interlace your fingers. Point your toe. And step yourself forward. Point your back foot. Feel yourself long and strong. And then hinge. Use that drishti, your focal point. Soften the knee and step back. And exhale your hands to your heart. So very challenging pose, but great for our core. So come on back to the top of your mat. Move these blocks out of the way. And we're going to inhale, arms to the sky. And exhaling again, soften the knees, bending forward wherever you're capable. Maybe let the head hang. So inhaling halfway up. Exhaling, bend the knees. Take one leg back in high lunge. Knee stays right over the ankle, right? And the other leg back to meet it. And drop your knees down. So then you're going to just stretch one heel back, pull the low belly in, tuck the tailbone, and put it down. And stretch the other heel back, lifting the knee, and put it down. So tuck your tailbone, pull your low belly in, and see what it would feel like to lift both knees. And put it down. And take a child's pose, just resting. So that was being on our knees and then lifting one knee at a time and then both if you can. We're going to do the opposite. So try this. Come to the top of a push-up plank. Tap one knee and lift. Tap the other knee and lift. Tap both knees and lift. And breath. Tap one knee and lift. The other knee and lift. Both knees and lift. Take a breath. And then float those knees down again. Take a child's pose. So let the knees be a little bit wide so your belly can really relax in between your thighs and let your head drop. Just notice how your body feels in this child's pose. Maybe it's different than the one we began with. And then on an inhale, we're going to come to seated. And we're going to do some seated twists. Maybe a little bit differently today. So we're really using our um, upper body. So I'm going to bend one knee and just keep my foot uh, in line with the inner thigh. All right, so if your hamstrings are tight and you can't get your pelvis tilted up, you could sit on a blanket or a block. Draw those um, toes back toward your knee, right? Then take gold post arms. See if you can keep this upright posture. And on an exhale, you're going to twist toward that front leg. Keep pulling this knee toward the midline of the body. Just corkscrew yourself around your spine. Push your chest forward. And exhaling, gently release. So if that was super challenging for you, go ahead and sit up on a block or a blanket, right? It would look like this. It's going to be a whole lot easier. That's okay. It's a process, right? So don't hyperextend into that knee if you're sitting up on something. So keep a little micro bend. Take your arms out, cactus arms, and then twist toward your front leg. So again, you're getting all the benefits. And exhaling, gently release. And if you're on the block, go ahead and come off the block. Bring your big toes, uh, your feet together. 
And then just hold on to your feet and gently stretch forward. So you might only go, you know, a quarter of an inch with a flat back. Maybe you can go a little deeper. Keep your shoulder blades sliding toward your waist. And inhaling, gently release. Go ahead and stretch those legs out in front of you. Give them a shake. And then we're going to come back down onto our backs again. So bend your knees. Kind of settle in. Notice how your body feels. We're going to finish with one more bridge pose and a gentle spinal twist. So maybe you touch your heels, plant your feet, and inhale, lift your hips to the sky, and interlace your hands if you can. Again, noticing a difference if you feel different now than the beginning of the practice. Maybe come back to that intention that you set and let it go. And exhaling. Gently release, float those hips down. Take your arms out to the side. Go ahead and stretch your left leg out. You're gently going to place your left foot. See, my right leg is out. My left foot is just gently resting on top of the thigh. I'm going to use my hands, bring them together like I've closed a book, to roll onto my right side. Maybe I'm even going to hold on to that knee, soften the bottom leg. And then slowly and gently peel yourself back, opening up the book again. So there shouldn't be any pain in the low back here, right? Keep pulling your low belly in. Maybe it would feel good to do like a little snow angel arm on that other side. Just noticing where you feel the tightness. Good. Releasing the hand from the legs, bending both knees a little bit. Pull your low belly in. And come on back. So to neutralize, we're going to draw the knees into the chest and rock a little bit. And then we'll go to the other side, so stretch the left leg out. Gently rest the right foot on the thigh. Arms out to the side, and then close your book, right? Bring the right arm to meet the left, so you can rest gently on your side. And then on an inhale, open the book. And maybe just move in that arm to see what it feels like. This side might be different than the other. And then take the arms back out to the side. So adjusting your hips, we're going to settle in for Shavasana. So the most important pose, maybe you keep your knees bent if that's best for your low back, or you could take your blocks and stick them under your knees for some support. Maybe I'll do that today. Opportunity to stretch out. I've kind of got to get them a little beyond. Tuck your tailbone. Maybe you have a blanket under your neck. Whatever's right for you, try and have um, your body free of any props. So it's not touching anything. And then just settle in and pay attention to your breath. Simply inhaling and exhaling.
So before you begin moving, see if you can tune into your own heartbeat. So this Shavasana is not a nap. It's an opportunity to be fully aware, alert, and comfortable in your own skin. It's an opportunity to just be your own self with no judgment. Now maybe start to get some small motions going fingers and toes warming up in the opposite or getting ready getting going in the opposite is the way we warmed up so starting with the extremities and then eventually drawing your knees into your chest you're going to roll to one side so that you can push yourself up to seated try to keep your eyes closed if you can sitting up really really tall however is comfortable for you. Resting your hands, palms facing down on your knees for a moment. So remembering that feeling of knowing who you are, being comfortable in your own skin. Now you have the opportunity to share that with others. So as you inhale, take your arms out to the side, get open and expansive. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart center, bowing your head to your own heart, with a mental pat on the back, for showing up for yourself so that you can be there for others. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. The spirit in me honors the spirit in you. Godspeed. Namaste.